Hey, sushi addicts, I wonder how many of you guys have gone scalping before. So I recently went to Crystal River on the west coast of Florida here, and the cool thing is that you can snorkel for them in only about 6 to 8 feet of water. It's a pretty popular thing to do during the summer when they're in season, so if you're ever in Florida, book yourself a trip with one of the locals. So a lot of the scallops you see in the stores are much larger than these. Um, those are actually dredged from the ocean floor by commercial boats, but these base scallops are much smaller and they only get to be about the diameter of a nickel. And the cool thing is that you don't even need any special tools to catch them. And with any scallop, the muscle is attached on both sides of the shell. And the best way to remove it is by shucking both sides with a butter knife. Um, just remember that the meat's really delicate, so be gentle, especially if this is your first time uh, working with these. Then you'll want to pull the outer gills off. Um, and by the way, the orange part you see is the roe. This is totally edible, but it's best if it's cooked. Um, for sushi purposes, I'm going to ignore this, but in a lot of Chinese restaurants, the roe is often steamed on the half shell. Um, with some scallion ginger, and it's actually really good. And once you separated everything, make sure to give it a good rinse a few times, um, and dry it down with paper towels. Uh, I forgot to show that, but you get the idea. And I'm cutting these in half so they'll fit better inside the noi wrap later. Um, try not to mince it up. You still want it to be chunky so you can enjoy the texture. But if you want to leave it whole, that's cool too. And next for the mix, I'm adding kimchi base and some scallion cilantro. Uh, by the way, if you watch any of my other videos, you know my go-to sauce for sushi is this. It's got a really good balance of flavor and it's not so spicy where it's overpowering. And a little goes a long way, so try not to drown it. When you're ready to make the sushi, you'll need a foshi of nori. And these usually are always made in the same size regardless of the brand. The sheet's going to have a smooth shiny side and a texture side. Just make sure the shiny side is on the outside later on. You'll want to cut it into about one and a half inch strips. The important thing is to keep the cut pieces in a dry bag right after it's cut or else they'll turn soft really quick, especially if you live in a humid area. So the style of sushi I'm making is called gungan sushi, which is just sushi rice and noi wrapped into a cup. And the quickest way to make this is to make two at the same time. And if you want a better presentation, make sure the shiny side of the noi is on the outside. And finally, I'm adding a couple slices of cucumber inside. Um, this is just to add a little bit of uh, crunchiness to it. Uh, this is just me. You can skip this part if you want or substitute with something else um, like maybe potato chips or nachos. Who knows? It might be the next big thing. Nacho sushi, right? Yeah, probably not. So that's it for this time. And by the way, if you want to try a raw scallop from the store, make sure you buy the ones that are labeled dry. This means it's never been treated with moisture retaining chemicals like trisodium phosphate. A lot of these scallops are unnaturally white and they'll sweat a lot when it's being cooked. And what happens is that at the end you'll end up with a puddle of cloudy liquid in the pan. So try to avoid these if possible. And another thing is that scallops should have a creamy to an orange color. That's really the best quality. And large scallops aren't cheap either. Expect to pay about 20 bucks a pound and anything less you should be suspicious of. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Also, I recently just made a website for the channel, so if you want more information about the videos you see, go check it out. There's a link in the des description box below. Alright, until next time.